What's going on guys? Michael Mayo with you once again. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to go into part two of our series on how to get tournament ready. Part one covered field work, getting your throws in, getting a lot of great efficiency in your throw, pinpointing your weaknesses, and really working on those out in the field. Today we're going to cover putting how to get dialed in to where you can take advantage of all that work that you're doing off the tee. If you go on to enjoy the content, let me know with a like down below. If you wanna see disc golf content on a weekly basis, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into how to get ready to get into your tournament. So the first thing that I always come back to when I'm trying to knock off the rust, it, whether it be just for a new season or I've just spent some time away from the game, is I come back and I just look at my comfort in my putting stroke. Sometimes you kind of find yourself trying to lock yourself into what you think the best technique is and it's really counterproductive. It's really hindering what your efficiency and what your power and what your um, accuracy can be on the putting green. So the, one of the first things I do is I just try some different techniques and, and get what I feel like is comfortable. Because if I'm comfortable in my putting stroke, if I'm comfortable in how much uh, strength and speed and spin I can put on the disc, then I'm gonna be way more accurate. That's my foundation of which I can build everything else on. So I, co I, co I cover a couple of things when I'm looking at getting comfortable. I look at things like holding the disc with just one hand, or two hands where I'm loading the disc. Am I holding it up high? Am I bringing it further down low? Uh, my stance, like where my feet are set, am I gonna have them kind of in a straight line? Am I gonna have them shoulder width apart? Like what stance, what, what position can my body be in that I'm gonna be the most comfortable to simply toss the disc to the target? So I'll typically get about 25 to 30 feet out and just give some, some not haphazard tosses, but I, I'm throwing the disc in a way that I want to know like I can get good pop on the disc and I'm feeling comfortable throwing it this way. And, if, and from that point forward, I'm building off of that. So then it comes into like, do I hold one or two hands? Where's my feet in the whole mess? Like that's where I'm starting to build from. So getting comfortable in my stance and in my release is always step one to getting back into that tournament ready putting stroke. So after I get my initial comfortable putting stroke down and it's in place, I start to go into my putting routine. So there's, there's a million different ways to go about your putting routine. You can pick the way that best suits your game, makes you feel comfortable and you can attack your game the way that you see fit. I'll share with you my approach to it and you can glean what you want to from that. So for my sessions, I typically start at a place where I feel very, very confident that I'm gonna make just about all the putts that I can throw at it. So that for me, 15, 20 feet, I'll just sit there and I'll just kind of get in my stance and I'll make 10, and 10 of those. So, and those are 10 makes, not 10 attempts, those are 10 makes. From there, I'll take a couple of steps back, typically putting me around the 25 foot range and I'll make 10 from that position. I don't, I don't move around or anything, I just go back to the same position, rattle off 10 more makes, then I move out to the edge of circle. I'm not going outside of circle, just to the edge of circle, and I'll try to rattle off 10 more. I'll do that for two to three sessions of just making 10, moving to the next position, making 10, moving to the next position, making 10. After I get through two or three sets of those, then I start to go into like sporadic placement of discs. So I'll try to put discs in, in a headwind, I'll try to put it in a sidewind, I'll, I'll set them out at 15 feet, at 25 feet, at 30 feet, and I'll, I'll kind of try to not allow my muscles to kind of get into a routine, right? Because when you're, when you're sending 10 off at a time, you can kind of get used to that range and you're just kind of you're kind of getting into a repetition thing. I begin after in phase two of my putting routine, I'm going into trying to make my brain have to adapt at every single putt. Every single putt means something and I have to reset, look at my target and actually assess, go through my putting routine and make my putt. 
So that for me, I see that paying off dividends for actual tournament play. Because in tournament play, I'm not gonna be able to get into the same position and try to rattle 10 of those off or something like that and get comfortable. It's gonna be a new situation every time, new lengths uh, and, and new environments every single time. So I, I try to spread myself out around. I don't want to try to, I don't want to try to um, get too comfortable with one set of wind. I try to change the variables constantly, make my brain adapt to those situations and put the disc into the basket. So during this putting session, I'm trying to pay attention to a couple of things. I wanna make sure that I'm feeling comfortable, that I'm able to deliver the disc, especially inside the circle, without, as, without a lot of effort. I don't wanna feel like I'm forcing something or that my body's working against itself. So at any point, I start to feel like my body's working against itself. I go back to step one, try to find that comfort area once again. So. That's one thing that I'm trying to check. The second thing I'm trying to check is my disc angle. I don't want my disc angles to be too crazy hyzered because that's, that doesn't translate into varied conditions like wind very well, right? A, a really hyzered disc is gonna get pushed, dropped, lifted all over the place because it's showing too much of the flight plate to the elements. So I try to keep it slightly hyzered somewhat flat depending on the situation and uh, that's definitely what I'm checking. The, the third thing I'm checking is my putt's pace. I don't want it to be completely running out of gas as it's making its way to the basket. I want to be putting through the chains, not to the chains. So I don't want my disc to just be completely running out of steam unless I've got like OB behind, it's a death putt or something like that. That's more of a half go. If I'm actually making a putt, I need to be putting through those chains to where it can actually hit with some force and the fewer variables can come into, into play. I don't want one of those variables just being, I ran out of steam. If I would have put just a little bit more strength on it, it would have gone in. So putting angle, pace, and being comfortable on the putting green are the three things that constantly get checked during a putting session. Okay, so I know that you're probably asking, like, where is outside circle putting here? All you're talking about is circle one. I spend about 15 to 20 minutes for every, like, hour or so that I'm out on, on the putting green during a practice session. So if I'm out here for, like, an hour, 15, 20 minutes, if I'm out for two hours, I'll, I'll devote maybe around 30 minutes in total to outside circle putting. The big thing that I try to keep in mind uh, that's important to me, at least, for outside circle putting is I want I want the delivery system I want my form to not deviate too much from my regular putting stroke I don't want to have to keep in my mind how to have a normal putting stroke then the occasional straddle putt right and then putts for for 60 to 70 feet out that's that's a lot for my brain to kind of manage and 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 keep all straight and and I don't want my distances to be in a weird in-between stage, right? So if, if I've got something set up for 60 feet and I'm at 55 and I'm trying to figure out which putting style I should go with, I want them to, to ebb and flow inside, uh, in and out of each other pretty well. So for me, I load the disc just the same, I get it set, and then I'm just stepping forward to try to deliver the disc. So my load point, my release point are all the same. I'm just getting my momentum uh, running forward with the step putt. So that's my current delivery system. That's what I feel like is most efficient for me. But I don't spend loads of time looking out to circle two and beyond for putting. I mean, those are excellent areas that you can really uh, gain some strokes on some folks, but you lose a lot more when circle one and, and just a little outside. And for those of you who don't know, circle one is 10 meters or 33 feet outside from the basket. So um, that's what people are meaning when they say circle one. Circle two is from 33 feet to uh, 66 or from 10 meters to 20 meters. So that's what people mean when they're saying circle one and circle two. So circle two putting is fantastic, but 
A lot of tournaments are won and lost from circle one uh, putting percentages, mark my words. So make sure you're crisp on those and you'll start to see yourself go up the leaderboard uh, as, as your efficiency improves for circle one. Well, there you go. I hope that you found that information helpful. This is just what I do. Hopefully you can glean some information, insert it into your own practice regimen, and hopefully it can help you climb those leaderboards and even get you a win or two. If you know a buddy that needs to work on that putting, be sure to share the video to them. If you wanna see disc golf content on a weekly basis, be sure to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you next time. See ya.